Welcome to section 10.9. Okay, general people, in this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to practice the idea that delta G is a state function. So we're going to practice Hess's law types of problems. So for your first quiz, please go ahead and try to tackle this question. All right, general people, the first thing I want you to understand is this top reaction right here is not a formation reaction. You don't see a delta GF here. And what you can see is C diamond is not the elemental form of carbon. Now, technically speaking, the second reaction is a formation reaction of CO2 because I have carbon in its elemental form, graphite. But what I really want to drive home is you cannot do products minus reactants because you don't have formation reactions for both of these reactions. So what we're going to have to do is do the traditional analysis of Hess's law. So the first thing I want to do is write down the reaction that I'm interested in. And so what I want to say is that I want carbon in its diamond form to go to carbon in its graphite form. And I want to see the delta G for this reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two reactions. I'm going to take reaction one and write it as is because that has carbon diamond as my reactant and it's on the proper side. Now for the second reaction, I wanna flip this reaction because I want graphite on the product side. So I'm gonna write CO2 goes to C graphite plus O2. Now I wanna write down the delta G's associated for each reaction. So for the first reaction, I did nothing to it. So negative 397. But for the second reaction, I went ahead and flipped it. And because I flipped the reaction, we are going to go ahead and times our delta G by negative one. So what I can do is I can see that my CO2s cancel out, my O2s cancel out, and I go ahead and write my reaction down, which was the reaction that I was after. And so I can do the math right here. So I'm gonna add these two delta Gs. Negative 397 is going to be added because of the negative one to 394. And so the delta G for this reaction is negative three kilojoules. Now I want you guys to take a look at this. I am saying that diamond goes to graphite, and I'm asking you, is this a spontaneous process? If you take a look at this, this is a negative delta G. So diamonds will go to graphite spontaneously. Now I want you guys to remember, this is a thermodynamic interpretation. Now even though De Beers and other diamond companies say diamonds are forever, they're not telling you the truth. Diamonds are not forever, they're slowly turning into graphite. Now the key word there is slowly. So remember, thermodynamics doesn't tell you how fast this reaction is gonna take place, only that it is going to take place. This happens to be a very, very, very slow reaction, and this is why they can get away with saying diamonds are forever. All right, let's go ahead and practice another delta G question. And so this time I give you guys delta G's of formation. So go ahead and do this problem out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and tackle this problem out. So I want the delta G of reaction. And to get the delta G of reaction, I'm gonna sum up the delta G's of formation of my products minus the summation of the delta G's of formation of my reactants. And I can do this because I gave you guys delta G's of formation. So let's go ahead and take a look at my products. The first product that I have is potassium hydroxide, and I have two potassium hydroxide, and they have a delta G of negative 440. Now the other product that I have is H2. And so I was nice to you guys, and I won't give you this to you on the test, but H2 is in its elemental form. And because it's in its elemental form, 
the delta G of formation is zero. And so this is going to be true for anything in its elemental form. Its delta G of formation will be zero. So remember that for your exams. So that takes care of my products. And now I'm going to subtract my reactants. So my first reactant, potassium in its elemental form. And like I mentioned, that's going to be zero. So I just have to worry about water. There's two waters and each one of my waters is at negative 273. And so I can go ahead and run this calculation out. So if I run this calculation out, I get negative 406 kilojoules. Now you guys can see this is a negative number. So this reaction is spontaneous. If you guys looked at this reaction, what it is is throwing potassium metal into liquid water. And this is a very explosive reaction. And unlike our last reaction, it occurs very fast. If you want to take a break from studying, go ahead and look up some videos of people putting potassium into water and you can see some really nice explosions with purple or lilac flames. Well, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.